What is going on, all of you growers and smokers out there? Easy Breezy here coming back with another substrate tutorial video. And in this video, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be checking out the Hemp Hearts Tech. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So let's start off with our ingredients. Here we have our two cubic feet bag of vermiculite that can be bought at Lowe's. It's more of a finer grain if you buy it at Lowe's, but that's okay. It'll work for what we need. Uh, I do recommend a more of a coarse, but fine is perfectly fine. No pun intended. Next up, we have our gypsum here. Now, if you don't have gypsum or don't, or don't know where to find it, just go up to Walmart, buy yourself a bag of plaster or a, a box. I think they come in a box of plaster of Paris and you're good to go. Also, while you're at Walmart, you might as well grab yourself a bag of hemp hearts here. You could find them in the bacon aisle uh, where all the flowers are and uh, they have these one pound bags here. I think these are ten dollars I think. Uh, the, the plaster of Paris will probably be about five bucks and then we have our coffee grounds here. This is just a medium blend. Uh, I believe this is Folgers. So in case you wanted to buy that, uh, there's that. Next let's go ahead and check out some of the supplies that we're going to need. So first up here for sanitization stuff, we have our 70% isopropyl alcohol and our sanitizing spray. We also have our gloves here and paper towels in the back just so we can wipe everything off and keep it all clear. Next looking at the size of jars we're going to be using, it's recommended that you use a half pint size jar here, but since all of my half pint jars are being taken up by a BRF grow, we are going to be substituting them out with a full pint size jar for this tutorial. And checking out some of the other supplies that we're going to need here, we got some heavy duty aluminum foil here, we have our mixing bowl. We have our liquid measuring cup. We have our dry measuring cup. And this is a one cup. And we have a one tablespoon measuring device. Also, we're gonna need a uh, tool to puncture the lids of our uh, containers here. So I have a Phillips screwdriver. And also, this is optional, but we have sandpaper because we're gonna uh, file off the splinters that are gonna be on the other side and more on that later on. And lastly, you will need a half cup measuring cup. Next, we're gonna select our sterilization method. And in this video, we're gonna be using our Instapot. If you want more tutorials on the uh, pressure cooker, go ahead and let me know in the comments. So our first step here is to prep our Instapot for pressure cooking. So to do that, we're gonna fill it halfway up with water. We're gonna keep our lid off and we're gonna hit the keep warm function and start, and this will start preheating our water for us. Now it's time we start mixing up our substrate. So first let's take one cup of our vermiculite and we're gonna keep a simple two one one ratio here. So we'll take, we have our one cup of vermiculite in here. We have a half cup of our hemp hearts. We have one tablespoon of gypsum. And where did I put the coffee? There's the coffee. And we will need one tablespoon of coffee grounds. And I like to add in my coffee grounds dry. That way I can mix all of my dry ingredients because otherwise it'll be a real mess if you try to mix the coffee grounds while they're wet. No big deal. We'll go ahead and mix these thoroughly by hand and then we will add in our water. So we have a half cup of water. Go ahead and slide that in. Give it a good old mix by hand. And we might need to add a little more water. It all depends on the consistency that this makes. Because this is largely untested for me. This is actually the very first time I've ran through this. And it looks like a two to one to one ratio is all right. It's It might be a little little too soggy for my liking uh, 
and maybe I should have dialed the water back a little bit, but we're gonna roll with it. We're gonna roll with the two to one one. We're gonna see how that will work out. So now it's time to just prepare the jars and to do that, we're just gonna add in a couple holes on top here. Just a couple of them, nothing big. And that, ladies and gentlemen, we are all set and ready to go to fill these jars. Always remember to add your air barrier of vermiculite on top as well. So after I get my air barrier down here, I always go ahead and with a piece of sandpaper, I have 150 grit sandpaper right here. I always sand down these metal filings on the inside of the jars here, because we're gonna put a piece of aluminum foil here on top of this part here. And uh, these little prongs here that stick up will puncture that aluminum foil and can allow water to get inside. And that's why a lot of people also have very watery substrate too. So we'll just go ahead and take the sandpaper here and you can see I already broke my glove on that. We're gonna go ahead and file down these tops here to get them smooth. Now that we have our lids all prepped up and smooth as can be, we'll go ahead and wipe our lips here. Remember we don't want any dirty lips around the edge of our jars here. Go ahead and keep these bad boys nice and clean. We'll grab our aluminum foil here. Move these off to the side, move these up so we can see it better. Grab a piece of aluminum foil. We'll try to get it as flat as you can. As flat as possible. Now it's like to go around the edge of my finger so it makes a imprint of the lip. Just kind of like that. Next, I go around turning the jar with my thumb pressing into where the threads are around the aluminum foil. And I just do a couple passes like that so you can see how super tight that is. Stick your lid right on top, very gently. Place our ring on top. Put it on just a little over finger tight. You don't need anything too crazy. Just a little over finger tight. And then for an extra protection, this is just me. I always put another layer on top like so, just cause I get nervous, I don't know. It's just something I always do. You don't have to do that, but I do. So let's go ahead and prep this other jar up too. So now we got both of our jars here. They are ready to be sterilized. So our next step, of course, is gonna be to shut off our warmer because we no longer need the sun. We'll go ahead and place our jars inside. Throw on our lid. Make sure it's on right. Make sure it's locked in place and our steam exhaust vent is off. We'll hit our meat and stew button. We'll set it for an hour and a half. Hour and a half. And we go ahead and hit start. And now we go to another hyperlapse.
Alright, ladies and gentlemen, now that that's all done, we can go ahead and shut off this, uh, our cooker here. And we're just gonna let it sit like this for about 10 20 minutes before we try to open up the uh, steam here. We're just gonna let it sit for a little bit and cool down. Here we are now, about 30 minutes later. Let's go ahead and crack the top. Ooh. Watch your face. And I'll let these sit in here if the top open. I got my uh, overhead fan running right now. I'll leave them in here for another hour or two before I take them out. And I'll place them just in the middle of this table here. And I will let them finish off drying out. Or cooling down, I mean. And here we are at the end of the video. And I've just taken the top foil off here because I want to show you why I always double uh, aluminum foil my jars here. But just before we get to that, I kind of wanted to show you what this all looks like a little bit up close. It looks very nice. You can see it's not too saturated. It looks very, very good. And I can't wait to uh, get grown with this and see how well it works. And you can better believe that I will be uploading videos on that when I do, uh, when all that happens, which should be should be pretty soon here coming up. So we take this lid off here. Check it out, guys. We got a perfect seal around here. You can see how it caves in on itself here. This is no doubt completely sealed and good to go. Now these will stay good for uh, probably, I would play it safe in just say a month, but you could probably push two months out of it. Uh, but my opinion is keep it in a safe place, put it in a its own uh, little bin and uh, keep it in a cool dark area. Probably last year a month or so in case you're not using it right away. I always recommend if you're gonna buy jars or make them it's always a good idea to use them right away. So, I hope you guys like this video. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, keep on growing, keep on smoking. And I'll catch you guys in the next episode. See you later.